All right, video two takes back off to where we left off, I suppose, uh, on video one. Talking about, again, as our eyes move across each panel and our eyes move across the page, you understand that time is moving as well. As I said, I was kind of you know speeding up at the end of the last video, but this can be done in three ways. You can duplicate panels to show time passing. But obviously, every time you go from a panel to a panel, time has passed. How much? It depends on what's going on. So obviously, in this case, it's just a matter of seconds. Why are we showing duplicate panels? Because we know he's thinking. Again, we went to the bottom first. How do we know he's thinking or that time is passing? Because now all of a sudden the elongated panel shows up. It's not that the lamp is important. It takes longer for our eyes to pass from left to right. And then again, the real subtle one, which I love, is the space in between the panels is increased, thus taking our eyes longer to get from left to right. Thus, how do we read that? Time is passing. All right, moving on to the next one. <clears throat> We've got something here called a bleed. Spiegelman uses this twice with quite profound effects. It, it's kind of hard to see on a PDF. On a page, you'll be able to see it more, and it conveys a sense of timelessness. What is a bleed? Well, if you notice around the left border and the bottom panel border, you've got the dark outline. But along the right side and the top, there is no panel. It's as though the image bleeds off the edge of the page. Spiegelman uses this rarely. I think there are there's one in mouse one and there's a couple in mouse two, but it does convey that sense of timelessness. I mean, imagine getting to Auschwitz is one of the ones where he uses it. Imagine walking into Auschwitz and seeing the sign, you know, work will set you free. When you walk into Auschwitz, I can't think of a better place to talk about a sense of feeling of timelessness as time is not passing, is not going on. He uses it there well. So a bleed is when the panel is broken or there is not a complete panel border and it looks as though the image literally bleeds off the edge of the page. It conveys a sense of timelessness. What about lines of motion? This is another thing I have yet to talk about, but we read lines of motion. Because of their ability, again, this is from Art Spiegelman's Understanding Comics. I'm sorry, Art Spiegelman wrote Mouse. This is from Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. Because of their ability to depict actions with drama, such as conspicuous, so this is called an action line, right? The lines that are on the page that let us know he's running. There's more than one way to do it. So you've got action lines. Here you've got the action lines following the person as they go. But you can also have action lines, they've got them here, but it's also con um, combined with multiple images. And you notice each image isn't completely drawn because we understand that that is in the past. We're reading left to right again, right? So he was here, but by the time my eyes get here, now that main character is there, I'm reading A, the lines of motion, and B, I'm reading the multiple images. Other people have done something called streaking. Here you have it here where it's still lines of motion, but the multiple images aren't really drawn, but they are streaked. So you've got lines of motion, you've got multiple images, you have streaking to show movement. You also have blurring. Here's a good example of blurring. It is not streaking. Now, the interesting thing is you can blur two things. You can blur the item itself that's moving, or you can blur the background. Now, we know that really it is the car that's moving, but it really is playing on your sense of perception. Are you a bystander watching the car whip by, or are you perhaps maybe in the car where here is, you know, our sense of focus is changed. Still, it's the car that's moving, but our sense of focus here is more on the background. Our sense of focus here is more on what is taking place in the car or the car itself. Now, we've got lines of motion, streaking, blurring, multiple images, and you can kind of combine all of these to their own. But again, we are reading yet another thing, not just facial expressions, body language, panel shape, dialogue balloon shape, the amount of panels on a page, where something is in a panel, the space between the panels, but we're also reading lines of motion. There's so much layering going on here. 
but we're also reading the lines themselves. Here, the direction, a line may be passive and timeless or proud and strong, dynamic and changing. Maybe it's severe, unwelcoming, this jagged line. You've got the rolling, gentle and warm, rational, the right angle. Think of Dick Tracy's chin, very adult. Uh, savage, deadly, uh, scary almost, weak, unstable, honest, direct, or expressionless itself. So how does that translate? Here we go. Dick Tracy. Notice the artist, those right angles. We've got the curving, whimsical lines of Uncle Scrooge. You've got the neurotic lines here shown by R. Crumb in an adult world. Christine uh, Critter's art, the curves and mad lines used for toddlers and childhood. Whoops. We also have the lines themselves. Many of you are going to recognize Kirby here, who's one of my favorites. He worked with Stanley a lot, and you, you know him from a lot of the Marvel stuff. You've got the, the world of adolescence where anxiety is being shown. The individual artist like Nick Cardi is kind of their personal expressionistic. You've got, again, these whirling lines that represent the struggle of modern life and how it can be crazy and loop-de-loop. -loop. Joseph Munoz, um, dense puddles of ink, the dark shadows. You've got the elegant, jazzy sort of lines. This is Spiegelman. We're going to actually read this. This is a comic within a comic when he goes on Prisoner on a Home Planet where you're seeing things from the character's eyes. Uh, at this scene right here in particular, this is a doctor. And in the panel before, he is normal, but he's just delivered some horrific news. And so all of a sudden, the doctor becomes grotesque. Why? Because the viewer, the character who is talking to the doctor, his world has just changed because of what the doctor has told him. So it's expressionistic. We are taking, we are, we are transformed to the view of the person in the comic. In one panel, he sees the doctor as normal, and then the next panel, it's almost mocking and horrific. Why? Because that's how that character feels. We are seeing through his eyes. Eisner, who is one of the forefathers, Will Eisner is the one who came up with the idea of um, the idea of sequential art, is Will Eisner. Now, one of the things we have skipped over is a great film, which I would recommend. It is on the Moodle page if you are really into it. It's called Comic Book Confidential, and it talks about all these heroes in the comic industry. Will Eisner was one of them. You know, I, I want to use the word gra graphic novel or Eisner's term sequential art. When you use the word comics, it has a negative connotation. We're going to talk a lot about connotation or in our connotation or the implied meaning of mouse but, or mice. When you think of the connotation of comics, you think of Uncle Scrooge and, and superheroes, and the world of graphic novels is far beyond that, and it has to do with Will Eisner. He wrote the Contract with God trilogy, which really brought us into the world of Jewish tenement life in New York City, where the rabbi, who you respect on the outside, can be heard behind the thin walls of the tenement buildings beating his wife. And now, because of people like that, we have um, LGBTQ comics. We have uh, girls going into puberty, comics. We have Spanish Life Barrio, comics. We have, you know, adult unfulfilled lives in comics. We have comics about death. We have comics about the Holocaust, for God's sake. So using the word comic is something I think that is often thought of as negative. That's why we are transcending that idea. It is not just kid-like, kid stuff. It is sequential art. It is a serious form. It is graphic novels, and because of people like Will Eisner, we now have comics, you know, Joseph Sacco, he's doing some really cool stuff about war in Palestine. And back in the day, you never would have thought of LGBTQ comics, or teens coming into puberty comics, or, you know, dealing with death, or dealing with some of life's major issues that we have now in the graphic novel world, and many of it is thanks to Will Eisner. Continuing on in Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics, We've got the backgrounds themselves is something that we can read. You know, here, obviously, you have the curly Q eyes. I'm thinking of M from Fritz Lang, who is a famous uh, filmmaker. Use that sort of curly Q, uh, 
uh, a swirling idea to represent almost psychosis or going crazy here. You've got the eyes kind of crazy here. You've got the, the background revealing the inner state of the character here. You know, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of Metropolis where it's an old film where the, the buildings feel like they're encroaching in on you. They are leaning over you, feeling, leaving us feeling as though the, the main character is feeling encroached upon. Here we might have the darkness surrounding a character which conveys what they are feeling so we are reading the backgrounds as well so the lines in which the characters are drawn the background at which they are drawn is important these are all things that we are reading of course we've talked about the panel shape but what about the dialogue balloon shape are they yelling are they taking an icy tone are they sleeping is it whimsical and kid-like you know it, it lets us know the tone of which someone is speaking that is conveyed through the dialogue balloon shape or even the way the dialogue is written or in here the onomatopoeic words crash wump crack those are written in specific ways which is intended to give us meaning hence our term literacy is the app interpretation and application of meaning to stimulus the stimulus in this case is either the dialogue balloon shape or the letter shape themselves and we apply meaning to it so we are reading lots of things in a graphic novel. We are also talking a lot about body language and, and facial expressions. And a lot of it is done by symmetry. So for example, look at the body language here. Notice that both sides are the same, the body language, but depending on how they're standing, is it stable and confident? Is it hostile or defiant? Is it directed outward? Is it stoic and solid as a rock? Is the body language perhaps? Now this is not symmetrical. This is different on both sides, but it shows us weaker. Here we've got defiance. Now we've got the body language and the facial expression looking away. Evasive, because now we're combining the hands on hips with the looking away. Or a bit of self-loathing. All of this is conveyed with both body language and facial expressions. Last but not least, you can even get a, a, an idea of the senses, right? Can you feel the bark on the tree here? Or the smell when the, the Play-Doh pops open? Or perhaps the sound of the coins jingling when thrust upon the table? The silence of a field that is blowing, right? So there's lots to read to recap our literacy term, the interpretation and application of meaning to stimulus. We're reading the senses. We're reading the facial expression, the body language, the dialogue balloons, the shape of them, the shape of the panel, the space between the panels, the words themselves, how are they written? How is the character drawn? Is it right angles and rational and stable or is it erratic and savage? We are reading the foreground. We are reading the background. And yes, sometimes we are reading even what's not there. And in life, to expand a little bit further on what we've been talking about, you've done this your whole life, guys. You've read mathematical equations. You've read your, your mom's facial expression. You know when it's a good time to ask for a raise in your allowance and when it's not a good time because you've read the situation. I've noticed some students don't always read situations and they ask a question at the wrong time. This is a skill you're going to need to to learn, right? When do you ask your boss for a raise? Well, you got to read the situation. When is it a good time to bring up something? You got to read the situation. We do this all the time by reading beyond what's on the page. And on the graphic novel page, there is so much to read. All right, that was the graphic novel packet. I hope you enjoyed. And next week, we're going to be jumping into mouse.